let's bring us to because we were both uh we were both there on january 6th what brought you to a point where you were like because i know for me i i felt like called to be there like i was yeah. there for the rally in november i was there in december and i was like i just feel like i have to be here for this and and see what's really going on mm -hmm. you know in all honesty i didn't know why i went you know, I, I, I just sort of, I wasn't planning on going. My wife and I had a trip planned to North Carolina that we were going to go and stay for a few weeks. And, uh, but that was the day after. And my buddy who I made the, I made a movie last year called America, God shed his grace on thee, which was a documentary about the constitution. And you can buy it right now at shedhisgrace.com. But, uh, and that movie turned out very well. It's on SalemNow.com too. You can buy it there. But the guy that I made that film with was going. And he just said, why don't you go? And I said, I don't know. It seemed, I don't like rallies. You know, I've only been to one in my life. I was a Trump supporter. You know, I voted for him, but I was like, I don't know. But then I decided that- like, I don't look good in red. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I decided at the last minute, I said, Okay, let's go. I'll, I'll I'll just go see what happens, and then I'll just go from there down to North Carolina. It'll be on the way, you know. So uh, yeah, that's what I just decided to go uh, like two days before, and I took my little selfie stick and my iPhone and made a lot of footage there, and uh, and then of course everything happened uh, the way it happened, and. I made a lot of uh, jokes when I was in North Carolina about yeah, I'm I'm hiding out from the FBI. But they were, the FBI was actually looking for people. I didn't oh know that. Oh my god! That yeah. Joke, you know. So. Yeah, friends of mine have been, you know, contacted by oh. them, and it's like they weren't even inside. It's like, what? How? How is this what we're spending our time on? And and like we're just letting everybody go free who who lit a building on fire last summer. Yeah. Well, I'm making a movie. You know, I'm making a movie right now, a documentary about the people who went to Washington and about what's happening to them. And, you know, all, I guess that's God put me in that place where, you know, that's why I went to Washington. Like I said at the beginning, I didn't know why I went. I think this is why I went because I was there. I made uh, a lot of, took a lot of footage and the movie's about how what I saw doesn't match up with what the media is showing you. All the media shows you is this, you know, this, this small group of violent people there were 2 million people there. I mean, it seemed yeah. like 2 million people. Did it seem that way to you? It absolutely seemed like at least a million. I, I knew after the November rally that the media was lying about how many people were there uh, and just saying that it was a non-event. They would fly over really early, would be like, oh, look, there's 40 people here. Big deal. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, okay. And that, that was similarly how they covered December, the December rally. And then I figured January would be the same until the, uh, the, the whatever, false flag, whatever you want to call it, the setup, the uh, yeah. the stuff went down. And, uh, and then I wonder, it's like, is the media intentionally getting it wrong or do they, do they just not know any better or are they just paid to push the, the this agenda? I think they are, are willingly pushing the agenda. I don't think, and and definitely they're being rewarded for it. That, that's what they get paid to do. If if you're not pushing that agenda, they just fire you. They they you know they get another reporter that will. So they're definitely in the tank, and it's definitely a deliberate lie. They know the truth, and they're they're not telling you the truth. And that that's that's been the case for the last four years, though. I mean, that's why. Did you see that big long uh, Twitter thread that that guy wrote about why he thinks Trump supporters believe the election was stolen and believe all this stuff? Who do you remember whose thread it was? Yeah, it's uh, oh gosh, it, T Tucker Carlson talked about it. I think last night or Friday night. I can't remember the guy's name, but it's a big long thread, and it basically says that. All the people that went to Washington that day believe the election was stolen because they know that they've been lied to for four years. That mm -hmm. every single thing, the Russian collusion thing, everything that the media has told them has been a lie. So why should they believe it now? Especially when you have this obvious situation where the election counting, the vote count was stopped in the, only in the four five states that Biden needed to win. Hmm. 
stopped in the middle of the night for four hours, only in those places where Trump was ahead when they stopped. And suddenly you wake up the next morning and miraculously thousands, hundreds of thousands of votes have been found. Yeah, we were like celebrating. He, it was like so clear that he was going to win. It was what, like two, three in the morning yeah. and he was cr way ahead. Yeah. I lost you, Chrissy. Are you gone? Well, now it's the Nick Cersei show. Let's hope Chrissy comes back and joins us. <laughs> I just took over your show. <laughs> good, good. I was going to warn you, like, when, if or when the cord goes out, just take it away. But I'm sure you did wonderfully. Um, yeah. So without without getting too much into it, the a large chunk of the American people feel like they've been lied to for four years. There was a lot of suspect activity. Um. And right, if the if the mainstream media can focus on like how violent and how crazy the day was, well, then they won't address what's behind it, which is like millions of people feeling wronged, feeling lied to, feeling like their voices aren't heard. And also, it's they mischaracterize why people went. You know, they say, "Oh, they were the insurrectionists there to overthrow the government and overturn the election." No, everybody went because they wanted the vote verified. Right? We yeah. wanted. The audited because it's like if we're going to come together as a country let's just make sure this is true because this looks funny to us mm -hmm. this looks fishy doesn't make sense so wouldn't you if you were on the other side and an honest person wouldn't you want that vote verified let's just prove it and then everybody will be happy and say look see it wasn't stolen and i think that all of us or at least I would, I'll speak for myself. If they were able to prove it to me that it wasn't stolen, I'd go, okay, well, fine. I guess he won then. But yeah. see, they're not willing. They're not and if willing. that's the case, wouldn't they have shown it to us by now? To right. be like, shut up. You know, we won. You guys lost. Get over it. But they yeah. haven't been able to do that. And that's why they're calling everybody that went there treasonous and insurrectionists. You know, they want to demonize those people so that they won't ask the question. Even right. asking the question... Even saying out loud, I don't believe the election results are legitimate. They want to demonize and criminalize that because that's their game. Yeah. That's it's how like, it's literally the meme of like the two Spider-Men like pointing at each other. It's like, right, if we're, if the people are vilified, well, then that distracts from what they're doing wrong. Right. And it sends a message to everybody else. Don't be one of those people. Don't be like them. See how they're. We're throwing them in jail. We're ruining their businesses. We're canceling them off of everything we can cancel them off of. You don't want to be one of those morons, you know, be one of yeah. us. Right. It's so not only do we have like, it's sort of like insidious on an insidious level, like in the universities, this sort of embarrassment to be an American, but now you have like the mainstream media basically like taking what, what's, what is very patriotic behavior and, and vilifying it. It's like oh, yeah. something that should be celebrated. It's, but it's, it's literally like they're just turning it around. It's like backwards world. Well, look at all the people saying, oh, the American flag has now been, it's now a symbol of racism and the American flag makes me feel bad. And look at all those idiot children saying that they can't find anything to be proud of America about when they're walking around in, in absolute most of the time the most prosperous place on, on the face of the earth. Yeah. It's like you're walking around not getting beat up because you're reading. <laughs> That's what's good. Right. Yeah. Not getting thrown in jail for saying stupid things. You can say any stupid thing you want in this country, you know, and they just, they, but they, that has to have been taught. That is not a logical conclusion that you reach from empirical data, right. From seeing the world around you. That is conditioning that is put into you deliberately by people who want to destroy the country. It's infuriating. I'm sure everybody who was there that day, like gets so angry watching this, the news coverage and watch the media continually. Now, even six months later, spin and spin and talk about it. People saying it is worse than the Holocaust, worse than nine 11. It's insane. It's like an insult to actual tragedies. Uh, yeah. it, it's a slap in the face, especially after everything that happened last summer, the destruction, <laughs> David Dorn, you know, uh, retired policeman who got shot over a TV, somebody wanting to lift a TV, you know, that was in the midst of like the BLM garbage last summer. Um, it's just infuriating. And there were so many of us there 
uh, you know, for, yeah. for good to just express ourselves. I met all the best people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw so many nice people there. I really did. It's like I saw people praying. I saw people saying the Pledge of Allegiance, waving flags. You know, there was one lady walking around with a little boom box that was playing. We're not going to take it over and over again. And it was yeah, like a yeah. <laughs> tailgate party. You know, people are just. It was. It felt like I was not at Woodstock, but I was like, this feels like that. Just picnic blankets families dogs funny people in costumes i love all the costumes all the signs were so clever i was really amazed with how many uh chinese people were there just really trying to get the word out on the ccp yeah um yeah people women who, people who could barely speak english but they were like you know I, there was this one woman and she really drew a crowd she like wasn't obviously she was having trouble with the language a little bit but she was like so passionate everybody could feel it and she just really wow. wanted to like get the word out and like th that it was such a feeling of unity it was the most diverse group of people i expected oh maga people all hillbillies but it was it yeah. couldn't be further from the truth and yet what are this what does the media say it was all white supremacists white supremacy is the biggest threat we face and it's like i saw so many different people there there was even a guy there that i saw that had a shirt that said fags for trump <laughs> Had that shirt on. And the thing is, since I was from California, I'd already met that guy. He, he was at a Beverly Hills Trump rally. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> there were so many people there that that don't fit the the profile that the media is putting out for sure. Yeah, absolutely.